we found simple moving average, weighted moving average, and some error mess uh, some error measures uh, using Excel so far. Now we're going to continue on in our journey, and we're going to find uh, do some modeling with that exponential smoothing model. So we're going to do an exponential smoothing model. We're going to assume the alpha is initially 0.5. That's just, you know, random number, whatever. Uh, and then we're going to calculate the MAD, uh, the MAPE, okay, so the MAPE, mean absolute percentage errors, uh, the mean squared errors, and then the cumulative forecast errors. Remember, the cumulative forecast error is very useful for determining whether there's bias. Mean absolute percentage error, uh, very nice because you sort of get a sense for... Uh, you know, uh, that percentage amount that you're out by, uh, it's, it's an intuitive measure, you know, MSC, very non-intuitive, like, uh, what does that mean? We had like 14,000 and something. Is that big? Is that small? I don't know, right? Whereas mean absolute percentage, Eric, got a little bit more of an intuitive feel. It's easier to understand and communicate. So we'll calculate those uh, four error messages, four error measures, and, and then do it. And, and to start off with, we'll do an uh, exponential smoothing model forecast. Okay, same set, same set of data. Uh, let's call this, uh, lack of a better term, ES for exponential smoothing. Uh, we'll find some errors, uh, ET errors, um, and we'll we'll start off in, in that sense. Okay. So if we remember really, really quickly, what does that mean, absolute uh, percent? What, what does that exponential smoothie model look like? So I'll just pull this back down again, our little formula sheet. And we see that our, our forecast is based off of an alpha, a smoothing constant, times by the demand for a per period, previous period, see little t there, and then one minus the previous forecast. Okay, so remember, so we have, uh, we start at day one, means we need to make sort of a, an estimate uh, which will make that estimate for uh, a forecast for previous periods so we pretty much have our forecasting for period two is the earliest that we could we could do a forecast for in, in this particular case right because we'll need uh, the previous period demand in order to make that fu future forecast okay, so we have that uh, and now, so now let's do that calculation now, when we were talking before, and we were doing this by grunt by hand, we sort of started our process off with the naive model. Uh, we'll do that again here as well. Equals to the forecast is equal to just the, the first period's demand. There's no magic to this, like, a, like a, I've said probably more times than you care to hear. Could have been judgment method, could have been uh, Delphi method, could have been... Sales uh, force forecasting could have been any qualitative measurement. Uh, picked a naive method just because it's just sort of easy to to work with and uh, doesn't require a whole lot of explanation when you go back to reviewing this for uh, an exam. So just naive method for the exponential smoothie model just to get it all started going. Okay. Now we saw on that formula we needed. Uh, a smoothing constant. So we do need an alpha, so we'll have to put alpha somewhere. Alpha. And uh, so we'll designate that little box there for for alpha. Which we're starting off at 0 0.5. Now we're going to uh, roll this through like uh, from a formula basis. So equals to that alpha. Got a we're going to absolute value that alpha because the alpha is the same for forecasts for every single period. Okay, So we want to make sure that that is uh, absolute referenced. And then it's multiplied by the demand for the previous period. Okay, So let's just pull it just so we... Don't get too lost. Just remember, alpha times by the demand. The demand is for a period before the forecast. Okay, and then we'll go one minus that alpha again times by the forecast for the previous period. Okay, so plus, and then one minus again. We reference the cell with the alpha. Alpha doesn't change, so it gets the F4 key treatment. 
and then close that bracket, times by the previous forecast. Okay, so we just we've just set up the, the, the formula, taking what we see in mathematical language, expressed it in referencing terms that Excel could work with. And now we're all set, we can just copy this formula all the way down. So very nice that way. Pull it down. Can't can't do a direct copy right off the gate because I don't have a matching cell on the left hand side. <laughs> so habitually doing that. And so at the very end there, we get our forecast for period six. These forecasts are all pretty much kind of close together. <laughs> Doesn't matter. If that's that's neither uh, neither good nor nor bad. It's uh, it's just what it is. Now I'm going to do something a little bit more innovative with the uh, absolute deviation, so I'm going to calculate MAD again. I'm going to start on period 5. The reason for this is that I want to be able to compare the error, amount of error, across all the models. So I, I'm going to start finding the errors on day 5, just to facilitate cross-comparison. You, yes, it would be perfectly correct to start it in day two. You could you could do that. That that would be fine. There would be nothing wrong with with doing it that way. I'm just gonna because I want to be able to compare across models. I need to be looking at the same uh, stretch of data. I need to be looking at the same time period. Absolute value of the demand again minus way over here the forecast. Now we're we're getting a whole series of of columns here with numbers that look very very similar to each other. It is like I said. I know I've emphasized this in the previous clip. It's really easy to get stuff mixed up here, so we need to be very very careful. Okay, I close that bracket and I get a value. Copy that all the way down. Get rid of the one at the very bottom because it doesn't mean anything. Of course, there's no demand for day 60, but there. Are Lots of forecasts, which we're very happy about. And then the MAD, same as before, equals to average. And then we just find the average of all those values. And about 108. Knock down a couple of decimal spots. Kind of goofy to get too, too carried away in that regard anyway. So we've got an error match, and we can kind of see, okay, it looks like that weighted moving average right now is, uh, is a little bit better than the exponential smoothing model with an alpha of 0.57. So now let's, let's, let's move on. Let's do um, map E next up in our uh, bag of fun here, map E. Now, map E, let's just pull that formula down here just so that we can see it uh, again. Boom, on down, map E, here we go. So, map E is we're going to take those absolute errors divided by the demand, express it as a percentage, that's all the times by 100 does, and then sum up some stuff and divide by N. Sum up some stuff and divide by N is the mean part, right? Anytime we're summing up things and then dividing by the number of observations, we're just taking a simple average. We're just finding an average. So we'll find the uh, absolute deviations, because we've already got the uh, absolute deviations already. We'll divide that by the actual demand and express each one of these in a, percent, in a percentage, i.e. times by 100, and then at the very end we'll take the average of all of them. So it's a little bit of math, um, sort of mixing in with a little bit of coding simplicity. It also makes it, uh, doing it this way, makes it a much easier for somebody else who comes in after us, who has to figure this out, to, to see what's, what, what it is that we did. So always been my sort of bugaboo when I've had to figure out spreadsheets before, is the person, the previous person, didn't document stuff or they made it so that it was almost impossible to follow along 
which uh, always drives you a little bit on the bonker side. Oops, not so sure. So we want to have some sympathy for uh, for those that follow us. So I'm just going to um, denote what I, I've done there. Not the formula itself, but just that each one of these is an absolute percentage error. So we're going to find that basically, essentially, the absolute percentage error for each observation. And then at the very end, find uh, the average. So we've already got the absolute deviation. I would we'll divide by the actual demand. Again, really easy to forget. It's way out there. And then times by 100. I'm just going to shrink that uh, number down. It's a little bit nasty to look at. It's also a little unnecessary. And so it's nothing more complicated than that, but it's e it doesn't look complex, but it can get easy to misclick on a given cell here. So let's then copy that all the way down and just check in the bottom, make sure we don't have anything bad. Ooh, the old div zero. Let's get rid of that because, of course, there was no actual demand for, for day 60, so it kind of got all crazy on us there. And then now we're just finding the mean. Hey, it's just an average. Eh, not, not so hard. Just an average. And that's it. Right? And there we go, right? Just finding averages here. And now we have the percentage error. So we see that, on average, we're out by about 1.64%. Eh, that might be not, that may not depend. Now, is that big? Is that small? That's it. That's a business decision. Right? Uh, for certain industries, being within 1.6%, uh, <laughs> pretty good. Other industries, uh, maybe not so good. But I think in general, 1.64% uh, average error in, uh, in your forecast seems pretty good to me. All right. So we're going to calculate a couple more. Okay, so we have a couple more error messages that we want to, to deal with. Uh, one of them is we'll find the mean squared error. And the other one is we'll do the CFE. Okay. So we'll find the mean squared error. We'll put it right there in that box. And then we'll wrap it all up with uh, cumulative forecast errors. Actually, I'm just going to change my mind here. I know it's the scourge of, of, of everybody to, why did you do this? It's on a video. Why didn't you edit it? <sighs> it's live. It gives it a good flavor. Let's put the MSC over here. And I'll put the number green right there because we're going we're gonna to streamline that calculation. And then last, do CFE. We're not going to... Not going to baby step the, step the MSC calculation anymore. We're going, we're going big league here. Okay. So let's think about what that MSC is, and I'm just going to bring the formula back down. And that formula is that we're going to take the squared errors. Now, what are the errors? Right. Well, we can look and we see error is demand minus forecast. So we're going to essentially take the demand minus forecast right, and square that and then add them up and then divide by n. Well, we can do that numerator in one big full swoop. Okay? Now, you're more than welcome to do it step by step. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? But let's, let's, let's beef up our, our looking. So we're essentially going something minus something else, demand minus forecast, squaring that result, and then adding them all up. Summation sign, adding them all up. There is a, f there is a nice, cool function in Excel that does all this for us. So we can go equals to sum. Now here's where it gets tricky. This is where you gotta be a big league thinker. We're going x, minus at y, and then squaring. There's other choices. We're not doing the squaring first. We're squaring the minus part. We're squaring the difference. So we need to make sure to be very careful that we're selecting the appropriate one of these functions because they all start to look together. And if you've got tired eyes, 
or if you're like me and you have to wear glasses to see all this stuff, you'll be very careful then making sure that you're picking the correct one. And then after that, we're just going to reference the, the various cells. That's it. And reference the demands. Which will shift and down. And then connected to it, we're going to reference all the associated forecasts. Which were right there. They have to match up though. So if you go B10 to B64, you're going to go H10 to H64. So I'm just going to kind of shortcut that a little bit. And we'll H10 H64 because I know they have to match up perfectly. Now that gets us the numerator. Okay, let's bring this puppy down again. Right, that gets us the numerator. Right, that's the, the sum of the, the squared errors. Now we need, so it's the sum of the squared errors. Now we need to divide it by n. Well, we do have an all-purpose function from n for n, and uh, that is uh, no more complicated than the count function, the count. Uh, we all remember the count from Sesame Street. We're going to count the demands. Why do we pick the demands? Uh, we could pick the forecasts. I'm sounding like a Jewish count now. Uh, we count the demands. One demand, two demand, up to 64 demands. So I can go B10 colon B64. Again, could have done it for the, the forecast as well. It, it, it doesn't matter, right? As long as it, it's a count of, of every item. And that's it. So one big calculation does all the work that uh, when we calculated mean squared error before, uh, took, took a lot more... Um, effort and activity to do this calculation when we were using it for the weighted moving average. Now we've streamlined it. It's a little faster and as you need these numbers, you need to calculate these numbers more quickly, uh, it becomes a very, very useful function. Okay. So again, look at that. Sum x minus m, x minus y, and then the squared. That's the important part. Right. And then, of course, we need to divide by the n just to follow along with the formula. Okay, last thing that we'll do is the cumulative forecast errors. Okay, so cumulative forecast errors, uh, we think this one through intuitively. So let's just bring down the cumulative forecast errors formula. There it is. We're just summing up those errors. Right? Adding them up. It's just a running tally. That's it. Okay, so let's do a running tally on this. So our first set of errors will just be, again, error being the demand. Now we just got to make sure we get the demand, not something else. Like I said, minus the forecast that we care about in this case, which is the exponential smoothie model. So uh, minus that. And that's the first choice. Now it's a running total, so it's going to equal to. It's going to equal to. I'm going to use brackets, although I know you don't need brackets. The next error, which is demand, minus the forecast, being very careful, and I'm picking the appropriate cells, plus the previous error. Now we want to stay away from all that absolute value stuff. Okay, don't don't go go don't go there. Don't use them because cumulative forecast errors doesn't have sign. We're not getting rid of signs. Right? Negatives are added in and, and positives are added in as they are seen, as they are calculated. And then I push enter. The 227 here, this number, now I can copy that one down. See, I get negatives. This is good. This is good. There's nothing wrong with negatives. Okay. It is what it is. Right? You get negatives, you get positives. That's fine. Although when we see at the very end on uh, day 59, that we have, have a negative 1726. Well, what does that mean? Right? That means our errors are trending on the negative side. Let's pull down our formula and look at our error formula right here. 
and we see, okay, if er error is negative, that means that demand must be less than forecast. So we're forecasting values higher than we're actually getting. So our forecast is out. It's maybe overly optimistic. We've got to think of how can we fix that. Um, perhaps it could be that the, the alpha is incorrect or is not the best alpha. And, and that's what we'll, we'll worry about in our next step. So now let's, um, I'm going to make a, a copy of this spreadsheet and then now we're going to use Solver to uh, find the optimal value for alpha. Actually, let's do that in another clip.